Riku has just announced the Theta Z1 and it's amazing! In this video, I'm going to talk about its specifications, its key features, how does it differ from the rest of the Theta line including the Theta V and who is this camera for and should you buy it? Alright, I'm going to go straight to the point. This camera could be the best consumer 360 camera for some users and in fact, I would hesitate to call it a consumer 360 camera because it's really more of a prosumer 360 camera. Its headline feature is a huge 1 inch sensor. That's the first time any consumer 360 camera has featured a 1 inch sensor and it has a ton of other exciting features that I'm going to share with you. First, let's talk about the features. By the way, I'll be reviewing the Theta Z1 so be sure to hit the subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Its key feature is the huge 1 inch 20 megapixel BSI CMOS sensors. A 1 inch sensor is huge. Check out this comparison. Now this is a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, the kind that's most often used in consumer 360 cameras. Now this is a 1 inch sensor. You can see that it's more than 4 times larger than a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor. It's so large that it's more than half the size of a micro four thirds sensor. And it's about one third, one third the size of an APS-C sensor. The last time I saw a 360 camera with a 1 inch sensor was the IndyCam and that one cost like 9500 euros. So how much will this Theta Z1 be? We'll talk about that in a moment. Another amazing feature is the lens design. Rico was able to squeeze this huge 1 inch sensor into a body that's barely thicker than the Rico Theta. In fact, the Z1's thickness is 24 millimeters. Compare that with the Fusion which has a thickness of 40 millimeters. So the Z1 is actually thinner than most 360 cameras. Next is the variable aperture. It can change its aperture from f2.1 to f3.5 to f5.6. That's insane because I've never seen a consumer 360 camera with a variable aperture. Heck, even the Insta360 Titan, it doesn't have variable aperture. So is this a real variable aperture or is it just a digital ND filter? We're going to talk about that in a moment. Next key feature is raw DNG mode with Lightroom stitching. Being able to shoot in raw DNG is a first for Rico Theta, but it's not the first for the 360 industry. But what's first is that they have this special plugin that works with Adobe Lightroom Classic and you'll be able to edit your photos in Lightroom and then export it. It will stitch your photos smoothly, seamlessly after you edit everything. That's the perfect workflow for 360 photos. Other features include an improved lens design with less flare and less chromatic aberration. It also has an OLED display with a menu that you can actually navigate so that you can switch between self timer mode and regular shooting mode. You can choose between three different plugins and you can also mute it or turn off the OLED display. You can do all that without using your phone. Speaking of plugins, it can use Android plugins just like the Theta V and it's got the remote playback plugin built in. Finally, it's got four channel spatial audio just like the Theta V. Now let's talk about the specifications. Photo resolution in raw mode is 7296 by 3648. In JPEG mode, it's 6720 by 3360. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but these are huge sensors and we're going to talk about why that's important later. Video resolution is 3840 by 1920 at 30 fps and I know that's not groundbreaking but again remember this huge sensors. It has live streaming. I don't know the resolution yet but I believe it's 3840 by 1920. ISO range is from 80 to 6400 so that's one stop higher than the Theta V. Shutter speed is the same as the Theta V at 1 over 25,000 to 60 seconds. It's got internal storage with 19 gigs. 
And I know I wasn't too thrilled about that, but that's that hints about the true purpose of this camera. So we're going to talk about that later. Now let's talk about why I'm so excited about this camera. Again, the top feature is sensor size, but what about the resolution? It's only 23 megapixels, but nominal resolution isn't everything. If you got a 12 megapixel DSLR and compared it against a 30 megapixel compact camera, the DSLR will blow the compact camera away. And the reason is the sensor size. The bigger the sensor, the better the image quality, all things being equal. If nothing else, because you're able to collect more light. So you'll have better bit depth, better dynamic range, better signal to noise ratio or low light performance. So how much of a performance upgrade can we expect from the Z1? Right now, most 20 megapixel one inch sensors are from Sony and Ricoh Pentax has previously used Sony sensors for some of their cameras. So it's very likely that the Theta Z1 sensor is from Sony. So which one? I'm not sure, but I looked at the performance of these 20 megapixel Sony 1 inch sensors and I compared it to the performance of 1 over 2.3 inch sensors. And it seems that we can expect about two stops better low light performance and around one stop a little bit more for dynamic range. By the way, the camera that I'm using for this video is the Panasonic FZ1000, which has a one inch sensor. And I did that so to give you guys a better idea of the image quality that you can expect from a one inch sensor. Now let's talk about some concerns because this is a significantly larger sensor and you also have a variable aperture. What about depth of field? First of all, let's clarify something. This isn't just a digital ND filter because Ricoh has said that when you narrow the aperture, you can expect improved image quality. So that raises the question, what about the depth of field? Will there be enough depth of field or will some objects be out of focus? The Theta V can focus on everything from 10 centimeters all the way to infinity. With the Theta Z1, the focus is from 40 centimeters all the way through infinity. Uh, the Theta Z1 will have some new accessories like a lens cap that can double as a stand. It will also have a semi-hard case to protect the body and it will have a remote shutter. Now let's talk about price and availability. It's expected to be available around late March 2019 and when it becomes available, I'm going to include a link in the description below. The price will be 126,900 yen which is around $1,150 as of February 2019. So that sounds about right. And like I said, when you compare it to other 360 cameras with one inch sensors, this is actually a very reasonable price. So with that price, it puts it pretty much in prosumer category. Which brings me to my next point. Who is this camera for? And is this a replacement for the Theta V? So based on the price, I believe this is not a replacement for the Theta V. Rather, it's a specially designed camera for virtual tours. It was made and designed specifically for professionals and photographers who wanted to switch to 360 cameras. Now, if this isn't a replacement for the Theta V, could it be that Ricoh is working on another 360 camera? Anyway, we'll find out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in 360.